All right. Before it's recording, so there we go. That's that's the first thing done. Hooray! Um, hooray! <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so like I said before, I've got a little bit of a different way to start the podcast this week. So mm-hmm. let's, um, I'll just jump straight into it, eh? What do you reckon? Yep. Yeah. Do it. There we go. <laughs> Episode 228 saw a massive bomb dropped. Uh, this is my last <laughs> podcast. I'm quitting the podcast. I think glass is shattered. Thanks for giving us a heads up before. After six years of the Aussie Gamers Express podcast, Lucas is stepping aside, much to the bewilderment of fans everywhere. Oh, won't somebody please pick up the children? Oh, oh shit. Kazza, what? Skrill, um, Uncle Chuck. Explosions. Kazza drops table, Skrill flips laptop. Kazza gets his noose. <laughs> so for now, Sit back, relax. Episode 229 is on its way. Please be gentle. Booyah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Hell of a way to start an episode. <laughs> uh, well, there you go, guys. Something a little bit different to start off this week. This, of course, is episode 229 of the Aussie Gamers Express podcast. I am your host, Snoogs, and with me is my wonderful co-hosts, Ramutha and Greggio. How are you doing, guys? Good, good, good. We're good. Good stuff. You know, there is something, there's a bit of a downside that I've already noticed. What's that? I mean, there'll be plenty of things that'll be downsides that we notice throughout the next couple of weeks when we work out that Lucas isn't here to do them. We're like, oh, right, that's mm-hmm. what happened. Oh, that's right. You know, we, we, we didn't actually have to do anything. That just happened. You know, like you know, like when you're a teenager and you just put your clothes on the floor and then all of a sudden they get washed and put away and you yeah, don't and know back, how. Back so cupboard, kind, yeah. kind of that thing. Uh, is the intro. I won't get a smart-ass intro anymore. No. I mean, Rem was the hard-working mother, mother and, and gamer. Mom. You were his best friend and co-host and i was whatever the week was yeah. <laughs> anyway uh, it was just it was just it was just something i just noticed because i was like normally i'm prepared for well i'm i try to be prepared for what gets thrown at me and and then i try and and, and try and come up with a comment Greggio, who really wants to be playing spider-man but can't bring himself to hold a ps4 controller <laughs> 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 Topical. No, to be fair, that's not really the Spider-Man. <laughs> Holding the PS4 controller is the least of the problems in that scenario. <laughs> yes, that's that's anyway. right. That's right, everyone. So, as you've heard, uh, Lucas is stepping aside for a little while. I've been given the reins. Good luck anyone getting them back because it's all going to go downhill from here. But episode 229, tonight we've got gaming discussions, followed by what if. What's that sound? I have a bit of a sneaky one this week, so fingers crossed. Uh, A new segment that I popped into my head the other day called Off the Cuff. We'll get into that a bit later. And last words. So... uh, how about we just jump straight into it with our gaming discussion, guys? I'm, I'm going to go first. I, uh, I caved. Ah, uh, you weakling. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. You've fallen prey. You're where I was about 12 months, maybe 48 months ago. Yeah, I've... That's, that's I've... where I was, and then... Yeah, I'm now here and I realise that where you are, that's not a good place to be. <laughs> yes, by, by that I mean I I have fallen to the forsake, forsaken? Yes. Yes, that's it. Also known as, it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Destiny 2 expansion, which started yesterday, I believe. Yep. Yesterday, the day before. Anyway, so... Started off and I, I couldn't stay away from the hype. I think it was. I think there's there's been a lot of hype. There's been a, a bit of talk between uh, different people that I know that are actually playing it full on, and a lot of them are come on, Pat, come on, Pat, get it, get it, get it. So yeah, I went and got it. 
If you'd asked my opinion, I would have said at least wait like two weeks. Yeah, I know. But two weeks. And then you watch the people that are like super jazzed about it in two weeks and go on like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's. Well, funnily enough, so far, oh, I, I've not heard I a bad did... word about it. Yeah, no. I, no, like, very rarely do you hear within the first two weeks something bad about a Destiny DLC because everyone's so starved for shit to do in that game that when it comes they're just like oh my goodness this is great and then like two weeks later they're like oh hang on a second now I take the the rose tinted glasses off I'm like these enemies are pretty much the same as the last ones and and I am still just doing the same bullshit I've always been doing yeah. and the armor is just a prettier version of the same shit that I've had for like yeah. and then you know and then all of a sudden, it's just like I'm now not playing this again. <laughs> so, well, my my my, uh, my interest in it solely, really, for the story, just to see how the whole Cade Six side of it uh, plays out, and um, yeah, that's just kind of what I want to do. I, I don't know whether if I'm, you know, for lack of a better phrase, chasing the dragon. That uh, that, that feeling I got <laughs> from, from when I first started playing <laughs> Destiny Two. Um, oh, a bunch of you has put the monkey on your back, I tell you right now. You probably have, yeah. So I'll, I'll accept that for now. Yep, that's fair. <laughs> Look, like I said, I was where you were like 12, 48 months ago. Like, yeah. I, I would have I would have done anything, spent any amount of money <laughs> with Destiny, pretty much just go, hey, we've got something new, and I would have just eaten it up. Like, yeah. But now I'm, I'm, I'm jaded. I'm kind of <laughs> I'm past that. They've burnt me out. You know what? And when I was you, I had friends that were with them, me, and they were like, "Greg, don't do it, don't do it." And sure enough, they were right. But you know, <laughs> it's it's a learning curve. Yeah, and uh, just we're at different points. No, that's all right. So I'll find out what happens with Cade, and then I'll yep. probably just ride off into the sunset uh, on Red Dead in a couple of weeks. I suppose you could <laughs> put down <laughs> Destiny Two, never to play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Uh, yeah, so that's that's all really I've um, I've played that's of of any significant value, I suppose you could say. I've had a bit of sure. a run around on on all the uh, the games with gold and the freebies, uh, the the PS Plus games. I've had a bit of a try of each and every one of them. And other than that, I'm officially the highest rank that I've ever been in Fortnite. I know that's well from playing everything else. <laughs> taking a break, taking a break helped, did it? Must have, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I still played too much of that. That's my switch off game. Yep. Yeah, you know, it used it used to be used to be Destiny was the switch off game, and then you know I started getting a bit more involved with it, and now yeah, Fortnite's the switch your brain off and just shoot at stuff. Cool. How about yourselves? What have you been up to? To be fair, like I sit here and I. A rag on you for playing Destiny 2's new form Forsaken DLC but to be fair my gaming life has been pretty boring at the moment I've literally been playing the same games I've been playing for the last couple of weeks on the same sort of rotation so I haven't played anything new I've, I've played uh, Need for Speed Payback just to get the uh, abandoned car it's the second last of the new rotation of cars so next week will be the last car of the new ones and they'll probably start the rotation again or do something else weird I don't know so this week it was uh, I can't remember his name Vasily I think his name was his uh, R35 GDR drag car was up so we got that today and then I've been doing um, Ghost Recon Wildlands challenge mode so I've been really enjoying that new that new weekly rotation of challenges they're they're really good, and the rewards are those new, uh, what do they call them, something, points system that allows you to get new battle crate, the, the new version of the prestige, prestige points. They give you prestige crates. Oh, okay. So uh, just the rewards are kind of, they're a mixed bag because it's a crate system and you just get whatever random shit they throw at you, and sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. But the challenges are really what I'm playing anyway, so... Hmm. Are uh, those new challenges part of the, the Narco DLC or are they based off the base game? No, nah, they're based off the base game. So, hmm. I, yeah, I've got to choose which one I'm going to do. I can't do them 
do both at the same time. So, yeah, so once I've finished the, the challenges, which, you know, sometimes doesn't take me very long these days because what can I say? I'm a badass. Just, just <laughs> and, talking, and humble too. Just ask anybody. Uh, yeah. I just want to finish Narco Road so I can then get on to, um, what was the next one? Fallen Ghosts. Give that a crack because... Oh, you're actually I going to be Narco Road. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, I couldn't. Um, I, I, under, I understand. Fallen, I, I get if, Fallen Ghosts. When you compare Fallen Ghosts to Narco Road, Fallen Ghosts just shits all over it. And oh, I, I can it, imagine it would. It would. It's you know, Fallen Ghosts is is back to the roots of uh, of what the game's all about. Whereas Narco Road's just yeah, GTA with tactics, really. Yep. So yeah, that's that's also the reason that I'm plowing through Narco is because uh, I figure if, if I do Fall and Ghost first, I may never get back to Narco. So I just, and, and it's, it, it doesn't look like it's very long. I wrote it's it's like four areas essentially. Uh, it's just very grindy. That's the bit that I don't like. You you have to do everything in the area to sort of the cap it off to get everything and it's kind of annoying but yeah anyway i'm working through it oh yourself did i also haven't really played much new this week i think i get the impression that this month is kind of like the lull before all the good stuff starts again <laughs> mm. as you said you know red dead redemption 2 is just one example um so yeah, it's been pretty quiet for me too. But like, I'm I'm stuck on Puzzledom, which is one of the puzzle games I recommended ages ago. Uh, freaking Merge Planes game <laughs> still has a hold on me. <laughs> and other than that, I've just been playing World Fortune because <laughs> uh, you know I, I found another one like that Merge Planes, oh. which uh, it's it's called Almost a Hero. Okay, and like it's it's a fair download. Like it's it's near on a gig, so it's got decent looking graphics and whatnot. But it's it's just a things attack you tap to help your little characters on the screen to to defend and attack them and you just keep tapping and go on higher and then you press stage and go back to the start and then you start all over again. Yay! And it's just one of those things. And my wife looked at me a couple of times and just gone, "What are you doing?" I'm like, I I don't know, but I have to. It's literally nothing. <laughs> nothing. And I there can't is, stop. There is zero so, point to what I'm doing right now. So yeah. I was actually contemplating this while I was driving home from work yesterday because I was I was actually listening to the the podcast while I was driving home and I we came back up on merge planes and I, everyone talked about the fact that it's it's crack and it's like everyone pretty much said it was shit but they couldn't put it down kind of thing. I actually thought about it and there's a lot of things that Merge Planes does right in a mm-hmm. mobile game. And I can't after after sitting down and actually thinking about it, I really can't say that the game is shit. Because it does so many things very well and it's very clever in what it does. So one of the things there's a couple of things. Um, one is ads. There are plenty of ads in that game. But for the most part you choose to watch them. You can play the game without using any of the power-ups. You can just play the game as it as it unfolds, and you would probably get uh, an ad every few minutes. Just And you'd have to do something to trigger the ad. Like, you'd have to open up the shop, have a look around, buy something, and then close it, and then we'd go, oh, now it's time for an ad. Uh, but that would only happen every few minutes. You could you could have un- uninterrupted play for minutes at a time without seeing an ad. Yeah, but I mean, because, you're right. Yeah. Because it, but then what happens is if you want to use a boost, any of the boot, and it throws lots at you. It goes, look, a bunch of boxes, you can have a boost to get the next speed up or a multiplier. There's heaps of them, and it throws them at you all the time. You choose how many ads you want to watch. So that's yeah. one of the first things it does really well is it really is catered to the individual how many ads that they want to watch while playing that game. The next thing is... So you all sit there and you talk about the fact that you're just leveling up for the sake of leveling up, but you're also, there's a part of you that's curious about what the next plane is. And it doesn't show you, it just shows you a silhouette. So you kind of like, that looks interesting. So you kind of play away trying to get to the next, unlocking the next silhouette to find out what the next plane is. So there is a driver for you. 
not just trying to make more money. Because if it was just more money and just pumping out more planes, it, you, you would probably walk away. But the fact that there's always something else to look forward to, it's enticing enough where you want to keep playing kind of thing. And then it's the speed of the game itself. Usually when, in, like... It's hard to say what you must buy as a session because it will come down to the individual. But regardless of whether you play it for a couple of minutes or you get caught up in it and you play it for an hour, and I think we've all been guilty of that now, the ones of us that are playing it, we've all been caught up playing this game for an hour or more at one point or time or another. You always seem to achieve something in the time that you're playing. Yeah. So whether it's just you create a new plane from the bunch that you have on there, like you you pick up one more plane and then it just sort of chain reacts and you get a whole bunch of planes out of it, or whether you play for a long time and you smash out a couple of levels. No matter how long you play for, you always seem to achieve something, even though when you analyze it and look at it, you go, I'm really not doing anything. This is this is a nothing game. Uh <laughs> You you still feel like you've achieved something. Well, at least, so at least I, something I I think first. it's I think it's a clever game. So to say that it's shit and that it's and it's nothing, I I think that's unfair. But it's definitely crack. Yeah. So buyer beware. Yes, yeah, so it sounds like someone's addicted to crack. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I guess yes, I feel you, like it's honest. worthwhile in I, that I, moment. I, but... I told you last week I'm trying to get my merch plane debts cancelled so <laughs> the more people that sign up the better off i am <laughs> i find you sitting on a, on a side of the road one day hey hey, hey you got you got some planes got some planes got some planes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i don't have kneecaps they came I'll around just, and took my plane i'll just take back. sixes i'll just take sixes, <laughs> <laughs> sixes. Uh, well, so yeah i yeah that's 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 let's that can be the last time we talk about merch planes because that's three weeks in a row we've talked about <laughs> the crack of of iOS. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a bit of news. Uh, have you guys heard of Cellnet at all? Is that heard like of? poor man's Skynet? <laughs> God, I hope not. Uh, it's it's me, like no, Skynet, no. but won't kill us. Well, maybe, maybe it's just uh, just around. So it's pretty much a trading partner that looks after uh, a whole lot of different products and gets them out in front of us. So like people, they're um, partners with people like JB Hi-Fi, Good Guys, uh, Target, you know, those sorts of stores. And for for quite a while now, they've been doing and, and focused mainly on the the mobile market. So we've got some information through that uh, they have just acquired Turn Left Dis- Distribution, which is a Sydney-based company. Uh, Turn Left, we've done quite a lot of stuff with over the years, and they look after uh, Capcom, uh, Koei Tecmo, Konami, uh, and then your Steel series uh, and Plantronics headsets, and also your Thrustmaster uh, bits and pieces as well. So that's probably the biggest stuff that they look after. And, um, yeah, so they've now been sort of brought into the fold with, with Cellnet as Cellnet sort of looks to to grow and, and build on a few things. So that's uh, that's something good that a company like this is actually looking at someone who distributes gaming wear and, and games themselves and, and the software side of it and thinks that that's another growth potential within the industry. So it's um, it's a brilliant step forward for, for Turn Left and a, a bit of a... A bit of extra recognition, I think, for the for the industry as a whole. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, both and Aussie brand and it might are, give them the ability to be ampy turners after this. <laughs> they might be able to. <laughs> we might see the blue steel yet. Like, I was going to say they can pull off blue steel distribution. Well, other stuff. I've got a I've got a, a whole heap of news that I've been getting this week. I've been flat out with work, so I haven't haven't unfortunately got a lot of it onto the website yet. It is coming, so bear with me. Uh, the Australian Quake Championships are going to be held at PAX this year. So, Ooh, nice. Yes, yeah, so that's on Sunday, October 28th, will be when the actual competition's going on. And you can, there'll, there'll be some details up on the website where you can actually register online for the qualifiers to get there. And if you're good enough to get through the qualifiers, uh, they'll, PAX will pay your way to get down there. So, flights and accommodation to get into PAX. 
So Ooh, it'll be pretty nice. good. It's a um, a two v two online, obviously being uh, Quake Champions. And have you guys had a go at Quake Champions yet? No, I haven't got a decent enough PC. <laughs> oh, you'll have to come around and have a crack. As, For sure. As soon as you get stuck into it, everything just comes back from those late nineties, early noughties. Just belting around the glory days, the, the awesome. glory days of, <laughs> of the or well, the pay. gory days is well, they're the better than yeah. yeah, when um, when PC was kind of attainable, <laughs> you didn't you didn't need a super duper rig. Not the mine is, but it's um <laughs> yeah. Where, where you actually looked at a, an Xbox and a PC and a PlayStation, and you went PC is a viable option. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. old Pentium three. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> Sometimes more. <laughs> yes, that's going on now. Like I said, there'll be some stuff up on the website to go and have a check of. And uh, if anyone wants to go in a two v two with me, I think we can we can, we can have a crack. I don't do too badly at it. I don't think I'm that crash hot to get anywhere, but I don't do too badly. Uh, cool. The other big thing is the Battlefield Five beta. Have you guys mm. um, seen any of that as yet? I haven't seen any. My intention was to get in, but. Being that it's Thursday the 6th, it's only just kicked off a couple of hours ago for the open beta. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have it in front of me of when it goes through to, I think it's like the 10th or 11th that it um, it goes on to. We were lucky enough for EA to get in contact with us and offer the, the early start. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, we just we just could not get it to work. So we tried to, to log in on the, um, on the Xbox and the PS4. Big issue is you had to get the Origin account on the PC, register and link your Xbox or your PS4, input the code to get it and just quit the early access, and then go and download it on the PS4, PS4 or the Xbox. And for whatever reason, it just wouldn't work. I, I thought think I got it working eventually on the Xbox and then just couldn't find a game. It took me, at one stage, I kept refreshing it for like 25 minutes and just couldn't get into one. So whether there mm. was too many people or or not enough or it was because I was single stacking, I don't know, but I haven't been able to try it as yet, but I've got it sitting there. So over the next couple of months, I just, be, um, I just started downloading it right now. Crack Hopefully it. by the time we're done, we can done with the podcast, I might be able to have a crack. Yeah, sounds like nice. a plan. We'll see how we go. <laughs> um, anything else, guys? Oh, I've got lots of news, dude. Yeah. I've got lots of news this week. All right. Ooh. Xbox are bringing out a new controller. Yeah. I, I saw it's, this one. I'm just going to mute myself before I say something I shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it to do with the finger-licking goodness of it? Something along those lines, yeah. Yeah. So Xbox are, bringing out a, are going to bring out a <laughs> grease-proof Xbox One controller. So you can pop your zits on your face and you'll still be right. Ew. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad it, I'm, I wish I just stuck with not hearing it the first time. <laughs> um, so it's, it's in line with the full release of PUBG to Xbox One. Uh, obviously, they're playing off the idea of this uh, controller dinner. will allow you to stay in the fray of PUBG without your chicken dinner causing you a problem with those greasy fingers. It looks just like a, a normal Xbox controller, only it's a lot shinier and slicker. And if you look at some of the videos, it has, you know, tests of people pouring oil over it or people eating KFC and then playing with the <laughs> controller and, you know, all those kinds of fun, fun things. Anyway, it, it's it's got a, a PUBG sort of uh, color scheme to it and it's got a... What's the hashtag on the side of it? I can't remember. Greaseproof, I think it was. Hashtag greaseproof on one of the handles. Do we think this is actually going to be helpful? I mean, it's great that it's greaseproof, but don't you think with greasy fingers you'll be slipping out of it all the time? (laughs) Well, yes. I I, I feel like the, the premise of it is that it will create this lubrication between your hands and... Like, I would have thought greaseproof would have meant that instead of it being smooth and slick, it would have been a lot more textured. Ah, but that would be absorbent and you wouldn't want that. (laughs) Well, no, no, no. I don't mean textured in the way of absorbency. I mean textured like rough. 
So mm-hmm. it's got traction to get yeah. through the grease and still grip your controller. But anyway, look, I'm, I don't know. I haven't held it, so I can't tell you. Maybe it's some kind of weird and wonderful material that negates the friction coefficient of oil and grease. That's a very scientific you know? answer. Yeah. Because science, yeah. yeah. Because science. <laughs> because science. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that in reality, I think it's just going to be plastic, but we'll see how we go. Have a look. There's videos on. It does look kind of cool. On I'm on saying. the web, on the line. The yeah, webs. On the webs, <laughs> all the interwebs. It's on the line. Check it out. Altered Beast. Do you remember that game? I do remember that. Yes. Game. There'd be some people that are listening going, I have no idea what you're talking about, but that was because you weren't born when the game came out. That's cool. However,. Alter Beast was an old C game. I think it was on uh, what was it? Mega Drive, I think. Sounds about right. Yeah. Anyway, essentially, you play this barbarian in this side-scrolling platformer, and you go around killing these these monsters, uh, zombies, and stuff that appear in this in this world that you're walking through uh, with your big axe. What's... And then what would happen is you would you amass enough kills to then change into the altered beast. <laughs> and then you would, from there, you just get into bigger, stronger beasts as you go th- progress through the level. And if you died, you'd start back. At, you'd sort of turn back into this barbarian and start sort of again. Anyway, it's the reason that I bring it up is not just because I want to to talk about a game that was 30 years of altered gold but because it is 30 years old it's turned 30 this year and the Sega shop has brought out a whole bunch of merchandise around that for its 30th anniversary so if you're a fan of altered beast and you want to check out some cool merch drop by the Sega shop online and uh yeah you can check that out wasn't i think it, someone looks really cool wasn't it re-released just recently quite possibly it is quite possible, can, seeing as though it is the 30th something. anniversary. Yeah, I can remember seeing something recently. Doom 2. While we're on the subject of old-ass games. <laughs> All right. Doom 2 is 24 years old. All right. Okay. I wish I were using them. <laughs> it has taken 24 years for someone to finally 100% level 15 of Doom 2. Sorry, what? Believe me. What? It has taken 24 years for someone to complete level 15 to 100%. So get all the secrets, all the kills, everything. Really? Because up until now, people have been unable to get the very last secret on level 15. And it's taken until now for it to be someone to work out how the secret works. Let me guess. You walk backwards as soon as you start. No, no. <laughs> no, so it was discovered by a gamer called Zero Master. And what he discovered he's, he's was the there was a teleporter on the level that when you walked onto it, wouldn't work. Some in which now this dude decided whether I'm, I'm look, I don't want to undermine his achievement. He, he's the first one in 24 years to work this out after all. And I would like to say that he accidentally discovered this, but if you watch the video in which he does it, this is not accidental. This is painstakingly annoying what he has to do. What he does is he runs to another part of the level, gets pretty much lures a pain elemental through this incredibly slow and arduous cat and mouse game, essentially, until... He gets him all the way to this this teleporter. Then he gets the pain elemental to bump him into the teleporter, which makes the teleporter work, and it teleports him to the last final piece secret area that is on level 15 that no one has been up, up until now. <laughs> wow. It was actually it was written off for so long because heaps of people had tried the had thought that obviously the teleporter had something to do with it. That they actually thought the game was glitched and that it couldn't be done. Like, 
like after 24 years, people kind of stop going, yeah, it's just a glitch. You can't get 100% on that level. It's just a glitch. You know, this is like the full-blown Ready Player One moment where everyone's just given up on the keys. That's pretty much what happened. And then this dude finally, finally found the clue and just went, yeah, got it. And he now owns the keys to the Oasis. The, the Oasis, known yeah. as Doom 2. Doom 2's Oasis. Yeah. So, congratulations to Zero Master. I have to I have to give it to you, man. It's not often that you yeah, get that's... these these secrets last for this long before someone just goes, oh, fuck. this is how you do it. <laughs> can't believe you guys. Like, I, like there's some serious um, commitment to this secret that I really, I really enjoy. It's the fact that people kept the secret, the people that made it just didn't get the jack of it and just go, oh, they actually just went, no, screw you. If you can't work it out, it's not happening kind of thing and then for this guy to like i said it's but if, you, if you're interested look up the video zero master doom secret you'll find it and watch the video it's it's not it's not a it's, it's not a small thing like I, I could trivialize it and just say he gets an enemy to bump him in there but it's not exactly straightforward as that so yeah we'll see we'll see if we can find it and put it in the show notes yes definitely uh division two I know you'd be interested in this because it's Division Two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what you may not be interested in is people getting uppity and upset about Division Two. They've been getting already and upset about Division One since day one. Yeah, well, look, it's it's kind of the same argument, only different. Same same argument, different game. This time, well, still, it's about <laughs> staff size, and I'm not talking about your avatar having a wicked handlebar moustache. I'm talking about the size of your loot. As you know, in in when Division first came out, uh, you had 70 spaces to fit armor and guns and keep stuff in your your your, your stash. Yeah. Yes. And due to a whole bunch of people complaining, they upped it to 150 in an update later on. Well, people are kind of getting a bit antsy about the fact that the ultimate version of Division Two lists that. If you buy the ultimate version, you have an upgraded staff size. Oh, God. Now, a whole bunch of people are now arguing that why should we have to pay the hundred for the $160 version of the game just to get the, the ultimate size stash? That seems kind of unfair. And, you know, for those people that are into, you know, hoarding, and these games do bring out those people and that's yeah, legitimate it's it's one of those things Digi- digital hoarding is one thing like, and we've all done it whether it be you know, you know an rpg or something like division or or anything like that like the amount of potatoes and shit that i had in skyrim was just ridiculous <laughs> yes and, but but with the division because everything has a place everything has a certain stat a certain advantage a certain disadvantage and you could have it set out so i i got to the point in the division where yes i played a stupid amount of hours compared to everything else that i've played i think my hours are up around the 600 mark it's i'd gotten myself to the stage where i used four different sets and each one Mm -hmm. of those different sets i'd have you know a combination of guns that were required for it so it was it was just that and by the time i'd gotten to the stage you know the end game and just grinding and getting through it all i i was just swapping out depending on the situation so if i was in the dark zone and i come across a group of rogues i had a uh, i think it was called the banshee set which i had built solely for hunting down rogues so i put the banshee set on let them kill me I'd come back with a stupid amount of extra power that would just help me run over them, and, and that's what I keep doing. I never got anywhere near the 150 mark with um, everything that was in there. In response to this backlash, and and the biggest problem people turned around and said is that it just says you have an upgraded stash size. It, it actually doesn't stipulate what that means in reality and what that means to playing the game 
So you could be talking about 10 inch, 10 extra spaces, or you could be talking about twice as many spaces. And and then they're turning around saying, we have no effect, no idea what effect that will flow and effect that will have to playing the game, whether there will be an advantage to those that have paid the extra money or those that haven't. So in response to this, Ubisoft just turned around and said, well, the extra stash size isn't really necessary for the game. That's a reasonable thing to say maybe to, calm, to, calm, to calm the people that were going to buy the standard edition but mm. then were upset because their stash type was, was going to be a little bit too small. But then for all those that are now going and paying for the ultimate version, they realize that <clears throat> one of the features is just an arbitrary, <laughs> what are you, you know, it's, it's it like, means nothing. It's like the special guns you get. As soon as you're yeah. above level four, you don't use them anymore. Yes. Yes. It's all it's all bollocks. Yeah. You know, it, it was like uh, with, when Destiny 2 came out, they said, you know, you pre-order it and you get the cold heart. And I was like, I remember Destiny 1. If you didn't pre-order the shit that you got from it, you never got anywhere else. Like, the, you got shaders and all sorts of shit hmm. that uh, there were pre-ordered dudes running around with and we all envied those motherfuckers. But... So I pre-ordered Destiny 2 with everything, got the cold heart, and then realized that, one, I couldn't play with it until part, halfway through the campaign anyway, and two... It was poo. It was poo, and three, <laughs> you could get it anyway. Yeah, you know how many cold hearts I've been given, like I've gotten now? Yeah, Again, exactly. I, I, I got the special edition with all the little bits and pieces, and yeah, I've picked up the cold heart many, many times. And deconstructed it many, many times. Yeah, put it into how many other yeah. worthwhile weapons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for Division 2, it doesn't matter because I've got yep. the big... So, look, the, the big look <laughs> it's fun, fun, fun for Division 2. It's not even out yet. Yes. And so, I the statue edition. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, I know that everyone is itching for Labo news. Because I've got some. Labo? <laughs> uh, yeah, Labo. Labo, yeah. Labo. Um, so on September the 14th, there is a new Labo kit coming out called the Vehicle Kit. Mm. So with your Labo kit, you will be able to create a steering wheel and accelerator pedal, which also has inst- uh, like an instrument. No, that's not what I'm thinking of. Yeah, let's call it instrument stalks. So like... You can have a wiper lever because apparently there's a thing in a game. I watched the, the trailer. You're driving around in an off-road vehicle and mud flicks up on your windscreen. You've got to hit the hit the lever arm to get the windscreen wipers to get the dirt off. And then you've got like a little selector on the end of your, your wiper arm that allows you to, to change what the arm actually does. Anyway, moving on. You also have <laughs> controls build the controls for a submarine which essentially has two sort of little steering wheels on the side of a box and you use them to turn the two propellers um, individually kind of thing to be able to steer and control your elevation on the water Uh, and then there's also a joystick for aircraft and with with it comes a key a vehicle key and you stick it in the ignition so you can start your vehicles so look wow fun times so yeah, look if you if you're if you got a switch and you're big on labo vehicle kit get onto it looks good yeah for the the cheap price of a hundred bucks for a box of cardboard yeah yeah look and look you could probably just buy a friggin thrustmaster steering wheel and does the same job probably in some cases better anywho yeah, it looks street. Uh, it looks streets cool. of rage four. What was that? Streets of rage four. Streets of rage four. <laughs> because you know what, we're talking about lots of old games at the moment. So, streets of rage, video game that's been around for a while. It's being developed by Lizard Cube and God Crush Games. There's no release date as of yet, but so it's early days. But those that remember the goodness of Streets of Rage, the side scroll and beat em up. Um, was that side scroll and beat em up or was it a. I don't side, remember. Side scroll. I can't remember. Yep. 
can't remember the side scroll and beat them up or whether it was a, a, just a straight sure up fighting game. Um, I can't remember. I, I, I was never really a fan, so. I, th- I think it's on Game Pass. No, oh, okay. Well, yeah. those that have a PlayStation, check it out on Game Pass. If you yeah, like the old version, a new version is coming. All right. So last week, uh, Luke talked about a game he played called Scum. Yes, I have had a crack of it this week. What you probably didn't realize, and it's probably too late now because the devs have removed it, but uh, you would have known that you could have um, you could unlock tattoos and attach them to yourself to decorate mm. your avatar. There was options to do it. There was well, like it's you couldn't actually pick certain tattoos. It was just like three different options, and it was sort of. You know, each one had a, a varying level of tattoos on you and style. Sure. Yeah. Well, as you play, you can actually unlock some. However, if you bought the supporters pack version of this game, you had a bunch already unlocked to you, two of which I, a, a keen-eyed player noticed were actually Nazi tattoos. Mm. Ooh. So the yes. two tattoos in question... Like I said, you would have to know what you were looking at to understand that they were actually Nazi tattoos. Mm -hmm. But they were actually just two numbers. There was a tattoo of the number 14 and a tattoo of the number 88. But they were kind of the only numbered tattoos there, I believe. So those two numbers kind of stood out to this player, being that those are two very important numbers within the Nazi realm. For okay, those that you've, don't, you've got don't me intrigued know. now. So yes, for those that don't know, and so you don't have to do the googling <laughs> and have that come up on your search results. Oh, that'd be the waste maybe, of my worries. Maybe, maybe, maybe have some problems with that. I've done the searching for you. So the first number was fourteen. Now this is the fact that there's a fourteen-word statement. It's it's important because there's a fourteen-word statement that's kind of part of Nazi philosophy and it's the the statement is this we must secure the existence of our people and the future for white children that is the 14 word statement it's called the 14 word statement I believe okay. so hence why 14 is a problem now 14 by itself you probably could have let it go but the fact that the next number was 88 another number within the Nazi realm because 8 the eighth letter in the, the alphabet is H. So 88 would be HH, which stands for Heil Hitler. So once this was outlined and discussions were had and Reddits were written and posts were made, uh, the developers decided that it was probably a wise thing to remove these two tattoos from the game. So, yeah. There's just some light-hearted news for you. When really all it was was a developer was born on the 1st of the 4th, 88. <laughs> probably. 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 Yeah, you know, it's all right. They can take it out and put triple six in. Nobody's going to complain about that. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> everyone, everyone knows what that is. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. All right. Hey. So now I have some news that I know everyone is dying for. Like, I know everyone. Everyone is on... They've been waiting for weeks for me to bring this up. Mm. No Man's Sky. Yes. <laughs> it has it has had an update uh, in the last couple of days. And part of that update has brought what is called the Galactic Atlas to the game. Oh, I've been waiting to see this, yes. What is the Galactic Atlas, you may ask? I am about to tell you. Dun, dun. Intrigue. <laughs> so... Think of it as this. It is essentially Yelp for the Euclid Galaxy. What happens is players uh, put toward, put to Hello Games uh, places of interest that they've found while playing the game, Uh, whether it be civilizations or creatures or planets with very specific kind of themes to them, anything that a player has gone, oh, that's actually quite interesting. They've gone to Hello Games and said, hey, can you somehow highlight this? Well, 
they've put together a, 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 an atlas and essentially you bring it up and it shows you a map of the entire Euclid galaxy and you have all these little markers everywhere which you can then zoom in onto and you hover over the marker and it will give a, district, a description of, of what that planet is. Now, the downside is it, it tends to be the internet a description a description from the <laughs> last the last update so these only get updated as the updates go through are so these, are these descriptions that are made by the game itself or by someone within the game uh, i'm not entirely sure about that i'm, I'm just uh, picturing uh, some I, some I, of the planets I, that i've been to so <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking that there'll be all these ones come to this planet, jumping penises everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I get the feeling that it's a little bit more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Edited. No, okay. yeah. you know, it sounds it sounds very ingress to me. Where like you'd have um, submissions from gamers that would then be reviewed and implemented within the game. Yes, yes. That's that's very much what it sounds like to me as well. Uh, an example that I read planet named in the article um, was that there was a planet that was named the the player that discovered the planet named it after his better half, and so now, Aww. yeah, now <laughs> now it's enshrined on the the galactic atlas as I the, named a false star for you. <laughs> please don't can't afford me one. I won't play too much. One in a game that no one wanted to play. Um, so that's that's why I need the Atlas, so she can find it. Because otherwise it's like, it's there somewhere. You just have yeah. to keep playing the game for, like, yeah, it's years. In the, it's in the Zelda <laughs> quadrant. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there's there's points of interest and stuff like that that people put out. It's not just, like, planets or civilizations. It's points of interest. And all of these things have portal coordinates. Access. Yeah, okay. So that if you, if, you ha- if you don't want to fly there, you can jump in the portal and just teleport to these places just to check them out. Another thing that it can be used for is if you are, say, you're one of those budding explorers that is terrible with directions and you get lost in space and don't know where you are. Me. What you can what you can do is you can use a, a signal booster to give you a a uh, a reference, and then there's a website you can look up. That if you put that signal booster ref, it, it will give you uh, a portal coordinate for where you are, and you can then put that address into the atlas, and it will show you where you are on the the atlas. So it's not entirely designed to be for that to happen, but obviously there's a website that facilitates helping lost explorers find their way in the Euclid galaxy. Yeah, it sounds like a step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I really want to love it, but I just yep. I, it's it's one of those things. You sort of, I'm kind of in the in the middle with with both of them, just to whether it be boring or just I don't have enough time to put towards it because it's kind of a bit of a uh, um, it, it sort of floats between both sides. I'd love to really get into it and love to push for it more, but. There's just not enough there for me. Mm. Yeah. Oh, look, you know, I think it's going to be one of those games that will eventually, I think it'll get there one day. Yeah. Just, it's just going to take a lot of time well, and a lot of dedicated people in the community just <laughs> persevering. And there will be some that do it. There will, there, there's yeah, always yeah. those people in the community. Yeah. They just persevere. I've got two. Have you guys got anything else or I've got two to finish off? I've completely forgot about um, no. I've got a few. Yeah, jump in. All right. Well, first one was a brief one on Assassin's Creed. So a lot of people have been a bit sceptical about Assassin's Creed now that we've had two releases within a year of each other, sort of feeling like it's going back to its old ways and habits and things like that. Uh, but that's not the case. Ubisoft has confirmed that they will not be releasing an Assassin's Creed next year. They will not be releasing any sort of um, split-off games, but they will be solely supporting Odyssey, at least for the next year, which is good. I mean, that means that oh. basically the reason why we've had two games so close together is because you've had two studios working 
on the same premise over the same period of time. And had that not been the case, I don't think we would have had these two games so close together. So that's good. So it's good to see that they'll have a bit more time again to invest in whatever the next instalment of Assassin's Creed will be. That sounds like confirmation to me. Yeah. Confirmation that Splinter Cell is on its way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luke is Luke, 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 Luke wishes. <laughs> <laughs> we can hope. We can hope. Um, so that's that's one piece of news. Uh, another one is that Bethesda has basically come out saying that for one of their new released games, they are not accepting of any platform that won't cross-play. So this, is, this sounds like a call-out to Sony. They're referencing the Elder Scrolls Legends. They've said that cross-platform play will be, quote, essentially non-negotiable. They will not release the game on any console that would prevent players from interacting with other platforms. So this is interesting because it'll be very interesting, I guess, to see whether um, Sony sort of call out a bluff or whether this might actually impact on Sony at all. I'm keen to see actually what you guys think on that as to whether that would have any effect on Sony. No, it won't. No. <laughs> no, no, I think... No. So, Sony I think... outsold Xbox, what is it, two to one-ish mm. uh, over this generation. So that's exactly what they're going to look at. They're going to just sit there in their ivory tower and go, all right, keep your mobile game. We don't really care. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as you say, it is it is just a mobile game, and so it's kind of affordable for them to do that. Were it a more prevalent game, do you think that, one, Bethesda would make this claim and two, that Sony would be bluffed by it. I, I think I think we're just done. I, I, me personally, I'm starting to accept that Bethesda is the new kind of developer that's coming onto the scene where they're kind of a first-party developer, but they're not. They're kind of lukewarm on the whole thing. They quite clearly, and they've done this at E3 for two years now, quite clearly shown favoritism towards Microsoft and the Xbox with how they've <laughs> how they've conducted themselves. Almost to the point where you could almost say that their relationship is almost a first party relationship, except for the fact Bethesda are too big and will turn around and go, No, we still want to be able to sell our our, our shit to everyone everyone else. <laughs> but they are very close and that that's 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 the impression that they're, they're giving off. So I think there's this new concept of almost being a first party, but not having their cake and eating it too. Now I'm going to suggest that this just has to do with the fact that the one X is the, is the slightly more preferred console at the, at this point in time. Let's see what happens when that shifts slightly. Uh, and when I say preferred, I mean, the hardware is more favorable for developers. I'm not saying like, not saying it's selling better. I'm just saying at the moment, it's the one that looks the prettiest. Mm. You know, that's the one that they want to show their shit off on because you know it looks good. Mm. Uh, so look, let's see what happens in that space. Bethesda aren't going to cut their nose off despite their face here. I think they're trying to make a stand. I think they're trying to push Sony's buttons. Um, but they've been doing that in a bunch of different ways for at least two years now. So let's see what happens. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say I agree with you because I know we'll put the bloody music in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you are like it's, I'm in the same boat. I don't. I don't think it's like if if we're talking Fallout seventy six that they turn around and go, well. You know, Sony won't cross-play, so, you know, then you can't have it. it. It'd be one of those things where Sony will go, well, we can cross-play with PC. They just don't want mm. to cross-play with their competitor, yeah. which yeah. Is, is my – that's that's my stance on it. That's why I, I'm not for it. They're, they're cross-playing with their competitor, so I can understand from a business decision that's the decision and the stance they're taking. The, the flat-out bullshit that they come, well, this is the best place to play it, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, that's just bump. That's just smoke and mirrors. No one, that's they're not fooling anyone. So it's all, all of the moment. All it is 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 clickbait. It's just you know he's going. This is what we're saying. This is what we're saying. It's just gonna. It'll just fizzle out. I think. Can can I make one comment about that? Of course you can. About not cross playing with a competitor. Yeah. 
this would be one of the very few industries where they actually have the ability to not cross play with a competitor. What do you mean? Every every other industry, doesn't matter what it is, every other industry has to be able to stand up with against this competitor on a level playing field and work not only as a standalone thing, but also compete with it on an integrated way, in an integrated way. And there's there's reasons for it. Like, I mean, it's a unique industry and yeah. it's why it, it gets away with it. So up until now, if, if it was just hardware, it was, if it was just a hardware thing, like it was back when consoles first came out, it was just a hardware thing. There was all the games, there was no exclusivity deals and all that shit except for the fact that whatever was made in-house was in-house. You know, there was Microsoft games and Sony games. But there wasn't any exclusivity deals. Everything had to play on both, you know, everything. So it was literally just hardware versus hardware. Now they've brought in this whole software thing. In my opinion, it murkies the waters of playing on a level playing field. See, with cars, for example, right? Ford can make whatever they want Holden can make whatever they want but the fact is when they go if they if they go say motor racing they all have to play on the same play they have to play together right they have to cross play essentially to, to race yeah right? in, in, in the same thing though mate you can't put Commodore <laughs> headers on a Falcon well, yeah let's not get down that <laughs> but that that's that's, that's just a, it's it's just another way to look at it, you know. It, I, I can tell you, there's a there's a lot of lot of non Fords running Ford nine inch diffs in them. Oh well, yeah, we all know that. <laughs> See, and, and this, this is my this is my point, right? Hmm. Like, there's nothing stopping people from doing that. There's there's nothing stopping you from putting a Ford engine in a Holden car. Yes, there you is. You can do that if, if <laughs> only moral. Moral. <laughs> Moral no, no, no. standpoint. Your I moral standpoint. I'm going to move on before a friendship's lost. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I would do it, but I know people who have. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's the same as putting a I V8 in a people. in a Mazda and putting a rotary in a in a Datsun. You know, it's. I know we're losing some people here with the, the automotive analogies, <laughs> but I apologise. <laughs> but, but that's where the plane. That's where CrossFit. That's that's where I mean that somewhere along the line, crossplay is good for line, healthy competition. Yeah, something's got to give somewhere along the line. Yes. With, anyway, yeah. look, I'm just saying it's a unique situation in an industry where the majority of industries crossplay is not is is something that happens all the time, just on in different ways of speaking. Yeah, fair point. All right, <laughs> let's move on. Um. So, Bandai Namco have announced Season 2 for Tekken 7 of their Season Pass. There will be six new fighters joining in. The first two have been announced as Anna Williams and Lei Wulong. There's a couple blanked out in the middle, and then who probably won't join until uh, sometime next year is Negan from Walking Dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a little out there. I remember him from Tekken there. when I was a boy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. I thought that was interesting. I'm like, yeah. that's a little left field. <laughs> but, yeah. So you're going to get an ass owned is what I'm saying. Like, if that was a straight up fight, how is... Yeah, He's okay. He's got a cool. nails coming out of it. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does she have a baseball bat with nails in it or something? Or? That's what he has, yeah. <laughs> that's what he has. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to bring up is um, something that's been announced over the last week. Pat, I know you'll be interested in this one. Mm. Talking about the the Witcher TV series. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. So uh, there's been a Witcher TV series planned for Netflix for some time and there's been a lot of theories over who might play Geralt. And um, I'm going to say that the person that's been confirmed is not someone I would have thought of at all. But he kind of fits. <laughs> I mean, I'm still struggling to envision him in this role, but I'm sure that he's going to do great. I, I have a reason um, why he fits, though. So there's that he's he's come out in a statement. I'll let you name who it is, but he's come <laughs> out in a statement and um, confirmed that not only is he a fan of the Witcher games themselves, 
He is mm. a bigger fan of the source material, so the books. Yeah, absolutely. So that's where yeah. he's, he's an official nerd that's, you know, pumped to be playing something he's a fan of. Which is great to hear. So for those who don't know, it's Henry Cavill, otherwise known as Superman, um, in the most recent Superman films. Yeah, really left field for me. I like I see him as being quite, I guess, ugh, for lack of a better word, polished. Whereas <laughs> Geralt seems very rough, gruff, and you know he's got some attitude and sass about him. So it's in it, it doesn't quite match up in my head. Whereas you know, like one of the suggestions previously being Mad Mickelson made perfect sense because he has that look, he has that demeanour. He's very stoic. Yeah, um, Russell Crowe. But, yeah, as you said, he, he sounds like he absolutely has a passion for it and the uh, the series producer came forward saying that basically as soon as he walked into audition, he just was Geralt mm. absolutely through and through. So that's, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. I still think it's going to be a fair while before we see this come to Netflix because I think... He's the only person confirmed, and I believe the next person they're looking at is, quote, a Yennefer-esque character. So I'm not entirely sure whether they're going to have a Yennefer and a Triss or whether they're going to have a character that culminates the two and becomes a love interest or whatever that might be. Uh, but I believe that's the next character that they're looking for casting on. And they shall so, call her yeah. Yennes. <laughs> Yennes. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I put up a picture in the, the podcast chat of a picture of Hen Henry Cavill dressed as uh, it's been sort of digitally enhanced as Geralt. I think you might be surprised. Yeah, look, I can see what they, but you know, you can do all sorts of things with makeup and art and editing. That's what they're yeah. going to do when they put him on TV. So uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's I, me. I, done. I, I think I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna. I think he'll look the part. He'll be the part. He'll, he'll do it well. well. Yeah. Last two to finish off for me. I've had the VR headset out this week. I finally jumped into uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew. Oh uh, uh, yes. I'm, How did you find that? Well, I'm a, I'm a massive Star Trek fan, and I have to say I was a little disappointed. Oh. Immersion and everything is fantastic. You're sitting on. You're sitting in the captain's chair. You're you're doing everything you need to, but it's a game that you need to you need to be playing with someone else. So I've I've found there are a few people that have got it, and we're just trying to tee up a day where we can all get on and and have a crack together. Okay, how many um, how many people can you have in at once? Uh, four, I believe. Four, nice. That's yeah, a good. So you've got the captain, that's a good crew. The helm, the cons. Officer. Yeah, so you've got Chekhov, um, Sulu, Spock. And yourself. Mm, so that right. was my other question. Are you a Kirk or a Picard? <laughs> I'm, I'm more a Kirk. Mm, fair enough. More. Picard is, is brilliant, but more the, the James T. Kirk side of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be a Picard. It's all good. <laughs> level out a bit. <laughs> the other VR game I've, I've uh, played is the PlayStation Plus Extra at the moment, Here They Lie. The first and foremost, it's as creepy as all hell, but that creepiness is taken away just by the sheer frustration of how it controls. Mm. So it's it's all to do with this, um, uh, what they call it, like anti-nausea sort of thing that um, does very different sides of it where you can... Um, turn off certain aspects of it so if you want to move with the with the sticks on the controller you can or you can just use your head to move around and it just it it sort of makes a, a bit of a frustration frustrating way to get around which is otherwise a very like the art style is very beautiful it's very in-depth very like you, you get drawn into it very easily and quite creepy but yeah unfortunately a little frustrating just getting around mm. do you do you think it makes a massive impact, though, for that anti-nausea issue? It does, but because I don't get the anti-nausea, like I don't get nauseous playing mm. it. So Not like me. <laughs> yeah. Like, for instance, with you know other games, I've got it all open. I move with the sticks. I look around. I do everything. It doesn't make a difference. With this, it just, it just makes it frustrating. Mm, okay. Ah, that's a shame. It's, it's probably very difficult to find that balance where you can sort of accommodate those who struggle with... Yeah. Uh, with nausea issues and motion sickness while not taking you out of that immersion. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that's it for uh, video game discussion. 
How about we go on to what if? As we probably all know by now, what if is where we talk about I pick a topic and we talk about blue sky thinking around that idea. Like we come up with our our cool concepts for what we would do in this situation or what we think of said situation. So this week I want to talk about survival horrors. If you guys had to make a survival horror, what would be the theme? What would be the, the feel? Who's the bad guy? Let me know what dis- describe what you'd make in the way wo- in the way of a survival horror game. I do so, have a yeah. big one. Sure, fire away. You're the prime minister of Australia, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to make your job last how long? <laughs> <laughs> you have to survive a term. Yeah, this is this is no, the shortest survival game you, ever. <laughs> all you've got to do is get out of Parliament House. <laughs> 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 yeah. you is got, this like, one of these Peter trophies where around the place <laughs> <laughs> trying to smile wow. at you if he affect if he actually smiles at you you die yep. oh. <laughs> it's like you're just so horrified <laughs> jeez <laughs> but you clearly haven't seen that dude try and smile it is horrific he can't <laughs> smile <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I mean. You know that you know like he tried to smile the other day on TV. You know what it reminded me of? You know in Terminator Two where John Connor tries to teach Arnie how to smile. <laughs> that's what it reminded me of. Only Arnie looked good. I actually went, "You are warm and welcoming, Army Arnie," compared to what Dotto was doing. I was just like, "Oh my god, stop, stop, stop!" Small children in the room. Come on, man. <laughs> Terrifying. It was. <laughs> um. So, Rem, you have. Mm. A- um. Well, you know, I'm a bit of a sucker for the the supernatural thriller style games. So, for me, the perfect kind of survival horror sort of thing would be more of that. I, I guess more of a psychological play. So, rather than having, you know, like a bad guy. It would be more of that, you know, that imminent but unknown threat that's sort of always there. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to describe, I guess. So if I say that the other idea that I sort of had on it was, I mean, we've been watching Stranger Things too, and that whole idea on the multi-realm, multi-universe threat was a cool idea as well, where you would have to play both in the present, in the nether or the upside down, and also in that void in between. In that sort of premise, you could also make it a co-op game. You could have people doing things simultaneously in those worlds that had to work at the right times to, to bring about a good conclusion. Otherwise, the whole thing just fall apart. Cool. I, I was thinking about it and I went, I reckon escaping from a cult would be a great survival game. Yeah. So, but not, not in the, like we've had a few that sort of have skated along that, that theme kind of thing. Like uh, the last, I think the, the, Outcast 2 was kind of based around, uh, sorry, not Outcast, Outlast, sorry. Outlast 2 sort of had crazy, crazy cult sort of attachment to it. And even there's kind of a little bit of that in Far, the, the latest Far Cry is a bit culty uh, in, in its feel. But what I was thinking was less than having to sneak around and try and avoid the bad guys be out in the open so you you are visible to everyone but what you're trying to do is essentially you're trying to find all the tools and stuff you need to get out and try and do it in plain sight try and find places to hide them and try and uh, s- s- sort of skimp away bits and pieces as you as 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 the days go along and there's like a deadline like you, you're working towards a, a time. If you don't get out by that time, you know you're all drinking the Kool Aid kind of thing. Yeah, I know it's it's a bad pun, but hey, it's there. Uh, also, I also thought it'd be cool if there was multiple ways you could try and get out. Um, so you kind of you have to pick a plan and and go with that. But you know, the next playthrough, you could try and find a different way of doing it, and also see if you can get other people to go with you. 
and you, there's this risk of who do you tell, who do you not tell, because mm. the consequences of being found out are pretty dire. You could be the one that ends up being disappeared in the process. Mm. So yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. And look, as for a bad guy, you could you could also pull any sort of you could even have it tied to a, a real historic event, like you could have a a Charles Manson or you know. There's plenty of people to choose from. I've forgotten the guy who was in charge of the cult that drank the Kool-Aid. But yeah, anyway, it'll come to me later. Anyway, but yeah, you could have have that sort of <laughs> realistic spin to it if you want to. Uh, obviously, that might not necessarily work out so well. There might be a few people that are a bit sensitive about, especially real world, there be people that lost people in, in those scenarios. So you'd have to be a bit careful. Yeah. But yeah, look. Your game app's going to be covered in codes and warnings. <laughs> yes. Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so please don't play this this level. Please don't play this game at all if, you know. So. If you play this level, you will find da, 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 on every level. <laughs> Do you yeah. wish to play? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's I that's what I came up with. So, so yeah. Snooks, oh, awesome. did, you, did you have anything other than the... Parliamentary one, or no? I actually thought that would be a quite a frightening game. Yes, genuinely. <laughs> because yeah, you've, got, you've got real world, you, you know, you you've got humans that are after you that are trying to do you harm, and not figuratively, but literally trying to stab you in the back. So you have to escape, and yeah, if right. you escape, you can. Well, that's where the, probably the piss take comes in a little bit, you know, if you escape so you, and run the country. So you kind of take the metaphors and flip them on their heads. Yeah. And kind of make them a real scenario. So, you know, the mm. metaphor of stabbing someone in the back would be quite literally yeah. someone trying to step in the back. Yeah, and you're having to dodge, you know, certain things that are thrown at you to to get like forward. Like Vicky Campion. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, was, I thought that, that sounded quite funny. She could be like a face hugger, couldn't she? She could. Jeez. <laughs> That'd be flipping the metaphor on its head. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to oh. impregnate you. Oh, dangerous territory here. <laughs> yeah. I might I might be sliding into offensive territory here. See what happens when Lucas in here to rein us in? Yep. Start to get all offensive and shit. <laughs> I'll have to just get I'll just have to get some sort of button, so if you go too far or something. Just a beeper. Nope. <laughs> hey. Almost like you had that plan. <laughs> yeah, this is going to come in handy sometime tonight. Sometime tonight, sure. we'll need that, yeah. Uh, well, that's it, guys. That's our, that's our what if. Of course, jump on over to our Discord channel, and um, we have a what, what if channel over there. Just jump in there. Let us know your thoughts, and if you've got anything crazy, Throw it in there as well. We always like to have a laugh. Yeah, Absolutely. So tell us what you thought of our ideas. Mm. We want to hear your ideas because exactly. we know you guys, are, you guys are clever. You can come up with some funny and creative things as well. Exactly. It's not just us. Well, sometimes it's not even us. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So on to What's That Sound? You know, after all this time, I still play the themes of every segment in my head. Yes. <laughs> um, what? Here's, here's a good question. What is your favorite um, theme tune for a segment? Which which segment has your favorite theme? Oh, I don't really know. Because I, I know I... So... I must admit, I like the who dat. Who dat, who dat, who dat, who dat. Who dat. <laughs> I like if I was any more vain than I probably said that, that is my favorite but um, <laughs> it's all but class <laughs> it is it's pure class um, so no my favorite is the one for um, gaming pre-order mm-hmm. I liked it more when it was called gaming disorder because it actually kind of it fit really well with that name yeah. but I I'm glad they didn't get rid of it because it really was my favorite sort of intro 
music piece. It was it's kind of cool. It's got that funky, and then it just all falls apart at the end. Mm. And I think while it's not a, it doesn't attach to the name anymore, it really is a good metaphor for how the game plays out nine times out of ten. <laughs> yep. Where it starts off with so much promise and then just falls apart towards falls apart. the end. <laughs> Well, we've got what's that sound this week? So, did you get any of you guys get last week's sound? I think we were no, no, no I didn't. But approach. I do know I know it. It's it's bugging me. All right, well, I'll play it again Sorry. for you. So, hold on two secs. Hopefully, it still works. It sounds so familiar. I know. I keep thinking <laughs> like something like. It, I feel like it's like a platformer, like Croc or something like that. It's something like that. I, it's from something of that. I, look, no, it's not. I know it. I know it, but I don't know it. It is, in fact, the startup sound for the Sega Saturn. Ah, uh, see, I said that was my first guess. It's a startup something. But no. <laughs> He's like, you're on the right track, but not that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's what he said. I thought he said that not. Because I think he's just like, no, no so, I'm not uh, giving you generalized guesses anymore. <laughs> Ooh, Uncle Chunt's onto something here. A start up on something. It's definitely not on my Victor lawnmower. It's Sounds not familiar. the sound of an Xbox starting out. No, it's not. Have a listen again. So I don't, if- I don't actually recall anyone picking that one up. I think a few people were close. But um, yeah. Yeah, if I have missed someone, I'm sorry. Tell me. Let me know. I'll um, I'll, I'll rectify it next week. So, are you guys ready for this week's? What's that sound? Fire away! All right, let's see if you know this one. Just when you think it's over? Nope. Boom. <laughs> Any ideas? Uh, um See, I want I want I want to say resistance. I, 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 for some reason resistance, Ooh, resistance jumped in my head there. But I don't think it is. When are they going to release the sequel to that? But no, it's not released resistance. Uh, a <laughs> sequel. They did release a sequel. No, the they they finished the last one. There's, there should be another one. The so they finished. had the first one. They've had, and three. then they made a second one. Yeah, after the last one finished, that they needed to make another one. They didn't finish it properly. Right, right. Anyway, so you weren't you weren't you weren't happy with the no. Who just says it's beautiful and that's the end of it. No, didn't like it. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Um, well, it's not that. So no, it's not that. Look, I mean, uh, look, I. I don't know. Don't... You want to hear it again? Yes, please. Look, right. I don't think it's going to help, but sure. Hmm, <laughs> it's something shutting down like a almost like a screen going out or something like that and then the sound afterwards makes me think it's probably some sort of horror game no i let's see now i'm thinking it's like part of a, like an intro video and like there's there's a first bit where it's like a signal and it's shutting out and then there's a bunch of blast fire you know like it's well these are both way off the mark <laughs> well, look, there we go. <laughs> if you're listening at home, don't listen to either of us because yeah. we don't know our asshole from our ear hole right now. Yeah, well, if you are listening <laughs> along at home be sh- and you, you know what this week's What's That Sound is, be sure to, to send us a message over on Facebook page or direct message over on <laughs> Discord. We'll see you. Oh, Kaz has joined us. Hey, hey. Kaz. Kaz. He wants to listen to it again. He wants to listen again. All right. Here we go, Kaz. K 
Kaz's Silent Hill, Alien, Batman, no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, not even close. <laughs> or close. So, yeah, so that's it. So make sure if you know, hit us over, hit us up. So that's it for What's That Sound this week. Now we're on to the next one, which is a new one called Off the Cuff. All right, guys, Off the Cuff is a uh, new segment that's just pretty much just a, a bit of a quick back and forth with each other just to just to go over a bit of a thought that one of us has had during the week. So this week, I've got a bit of a statement that, and uh, what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll tell you the statement, I'll explain what I actually mean by that statement, and then it's an open floor. Uh, so the statement from me this week, funnily enough, we actually sort of touched on it a bit earlier in the show. Sony has lost its way. The reason for that statement is I'm looking at everything holistically. At, at my heart, I am a PlayStation fanboy. I've never once denied that. But what I'm looking at is Sony is very quickly losing focus on new and upcoming players. So Xbox is out there doing a lot of different things. You've got the Game Pass. You've got the the pay by the month set up now you've got cross play which is just the flavor of the moment and you've got this well you've got phil really xbox has phil out the front who's you know very charismatic very much out there the face of the company you know interacting with people and i just feel that sony has has lost its way in that that sort of area they don't seem to be focusing on the next generation of players coming through they just seem to be stuck in what they've been doing and not taking those steps forward so that's my thoughts what do you guys reckon you could possibly see that that's true from the comments that were made uh a few months back remember we we're talking about you know they're talking about the fact that they were no longer producing any more consoles and that they were the movie shifting their focus from sale of hardware to software yeah software and and uh and then hunkering down for what was it hunkering down for one last push before moving on kind of thing yep i kind of i kind of got the impression that part of that was what they were trying to say there was they were going to start looking they, they were they were less looking about at getting new people because they're obviously not selling consoles the the consoles aren't where the 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 focus are at the moment selling the consoles so therefore you're not actually focusing on the influx of new new people what you're doing is you're focusing on your current audience your current customer base Mm -hmm. Uh, so i think what you're saying is is potentially true they they they're not looking at the new new people potentially coming on board because that's not where their focus is at the moment. Their focus will shift back to that when they have a new console to sell and they want seats, bumps in seats kind of thing. Whether that is to their detriment or not will remain to see. Yep. I think the biggest thing Uh, that I I mean by it is um, I'm I'm seeing Xbox everywhere. Yep. I'm, I'm seeing Phil everywhere. I'm seeing Major Nelson everywhere. I'm... I'm seeing that that Xbox has this this group of people that is out there. It's actively promoting. It's actively promoting the software that it has on sale that week. It's promoting its games with not just a video that goes up, but with a face, uh, whether it be Phil's or uh, Larry Hybe, is it? That's Mike mm. Nelson, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's he's doing something every week and it's just it's this constant constant thing that i'm seeing and i'm not seeing it from the other side of the fence that's that's where i'm going it seems to be that xbox is out there actively doing it and i'm enjoying the way that they're doing it and i'm enjoying the interaction that you know it's it's false interaction it's you know it's bullshit via twitter facebook whatever but it's still interaction it's still it's still something that we're getting from 
we're getting from a real person. We're not just getting something just, you know, someone's put together in a dark room somewhere and flipped it up on the internet as a video. We've actually got someone that's, that's you know, visual that's out there in front of it. And that seems to be more and more appealing towards uh, a lot more people now. And yeah. So that, mm. that's see, kind of where, I'm, where see, I'm sort of coming from. See, the thing is, you've got to look at also where both these companies have been in the last several years. Xbox is coming out of a slump. They've, they've, they've been... They've, the beginning of this cycle, they, they were in a slump. They came out... They came out of a position where they were strong and they screwed it up, right? And and they've been trying to claw back ground ever since. And yeah. unfortunately, the way you do that and, and do it effectively is what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. They're, they're promoting themselves. They're going, look at us, look at us, look at us. And they're trying a whole bunch of things to try and win back popularity and and there's going to be some things that they're just doing because yeah it's the flavor of the month because that's what wins them a couple of seats here and there and 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 it's just a battle it's they're going to win by a thousand cuts you know kind of thing it's death by a thousand cuts playstation on the other hand they're not they've been in a position of strength for the majority of this cycle so they can up until now they've just pretty much been doing whatever they like and everything wins because they don't have to try. The problem with that is that that's where you end up sliding back into a slump. Yeah. Especially when when your when your competitor is on the rise and let's not lie, Xbox is on the rise. It's going to be this universal cycle of how things happen. You know, the top dog always gets uppity eventually and they'll have a they'll have a slump. You know, they'll slide and the other team will get an upper hand for a while and they'll they'll be doing all the things that they need to stay on top but eventually they start to get complacent because they're like all right we've spent shit loads of money now we need to sort of sit back and recoup some of that and just let's just ride this wave for a little while and they do they ride the wave and it works for a while but then all of a sudden they realize that all the investments that have been made are no longer dragging out and there'll be a deficit and there'll be a hole and they'll fall into it, and it just seems, and it will be at that time that the other team have gone. All right, now we need we've we need to reinvest. We need to revitalize, and it's just one of those things. It's so yes, you're probably right. It's whether whether PlayStation is smart enough to go. We can't just rest on our laurels. Now it may seem like they're doing that. They're also very different business models as well. Xbox have got a very family to be seen friendly kind of concept going. They want the whole family playing on the Xbox. They want everyone playing with their friends. They, it's a community thing. That's what they they tout. That's what they want. That's that's their thing. And so you have to be seen. You have to be. Everything has to be happy and large in life for that paradigm to work. It's a it's a very high energy marketing strategy yeah no I, I totally agree with that as, as you say you know xbox is very family oriented playstation's always been for the player and i think in that they see themselves as the premium product and the product that speaks for itself and and it does i mean you know you wouldn't have the sales on the console that you do if it didn't and yes you know xbox is everywhere xbox is approachable they're very down to earth they're very relatable they're on everything they're on they're utilizing mixer and getting live events going constantly because they have to keep that that energy going the interesting thing is watching you know with all the effort that xbox is making at the moment and with the the seeming almost no effort that sony's making at the moment it'd be interesting to see who actually sort of is coming out on top while appearances are that you know playstation's not doing anything they're still reaping rewards from it they, they definitely need to pick something up soon, but I think they have the ability to ride the wave and they have the ability actually to let the product speak for itself for a bit longer as long as there is this promise of the next console and the next product. They're always going to have that rather large, loyal fan base who are going to be able to financially support them, whether it be through console purchase or games or additional products or VR. 
And I, I guess the other thing is that they've they have spent a lot of time promoting their VR products rather than their consoles and the support for which you know that needs, like you know, updating to the pro and all this extra stuff, giving you time to sort of digest VR and commit to it and get more and more people on board for that as well. I can see that probably PlayStation 5, if that's what it's going to be called, will probably be more dominated by that VR arena. They're in a a power position, I think, at the moment where they don't have to speak for themselves in order to maintain that strength, whereas Xbox have to constantly be talking to you. And that's a good thing because you want that. That's the culture that they want for their product. Um, But it does demand far more energy from them and far more conversation. Beautiful points. Thank you very much. That's what this is all about. It's about just having a quick, you know, we're not going to worry about doing um, sort of any research. It's just pure, uh, purely your own thoughts. You know, it's not clouded by anyone else's judgment, which is good. So uh, thank you very much for that, guys. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Yeah, so anyone that's listening along, again, jump on over to Discord. We'll chuck a... uh, a channel in there to to bring this um, to to add to, sorry, and uh, you can let us know your thoughts. So with that, it's on to last words. All right, you guys got any last words this week? No. Well, <laughs> we well we did well without Mr. Luke, I think. You know, I've done this before, but I'm more nervous now than I ever have been. It's a responsibility. I know. It's a, it's a, it's a big responsibility now. I've been sitting here staring at the uh, the recorder to make sure that it's still working. I'm running around, look, looking at, looking around everything, making sure, oh, is that still going? Is that still going? What's happening? Oh, I didn't check that. I hope it's right. Ah, you've made it sound effortless, because you've done an awesome job for the first, for first <laughs> series go. <laughs> Oh, yes. So, um, yeah, I don't really have any last words tonight. It's uh, very much, um, well, the main word I've got probably is uh, go you Panthers. <laughs> League final start this weekend. Woo! Woohoo! <sighs> take... <laughs> you can take the boy out of the footy, but you can't take the footy out of the boy, can you? Never. Nah, never. So, yeah. Bridget, what's our code word for this week? Yes. Yeah, I've been thinking about that because the chat's been pretty slow today because, well, Kaz. we haven't had anyone here. But Hi, Kaz. What's, what's a, what's a <laughs> random Kaz. code word for Ka- from Kaz? No, oh, I'll come up with something. Oh, I, I was actually thinking just then oh, I was going to make it Expo 88. I'm not sure whether that's a little bit too <laughs> scathing. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, maybe not. Um, uh, 1488 won't work either. <laughs> Sexpo, there you go. Sexpo 88. <laughs> Sexpo 88. Yep. Let's make it Yelpful Euclid. Can you spell that? <laughs> well, you know how to spell Yelp, yeah? Yeah. And you know how to spell four? Yeah, I'm good with you so far. So Euclid <laughs> is E-U-C-L-I-D, Euclid. Right. Excellent. Right. Okay. That what that yeah. Yelp for Euclid. Cool. <laughs> well, if we've got nothing else left, that's it for show number two hundred and twenty nine. So, just just so we can actually really grasp the full ramification of this, this is actually the first episode of the Aussie Gamers podcast since episode one, where officially, because we've had people that have been away and stuff, but officially none of the original cast members are now part of the podcast. There are people wow. that have been listening since day one that have seen this evolution firsthand. Those people, take a moment just to just, just let, let that permeate. Jesus. That's very sobering. <laughs> it is, I'm, isn't it? I'm one of those people. Oh. Yeah, now see? I'm so, it. Now, not the not, not, not the one who put more weight on your shoulders, but... 
Bam. There it is. <laughs> I'm just going to go and rock myself to sleep in the corner now. Okay. <laughs> I screwed it up. <laughs> All right, buddy. It's all good. Keep, look. We miss you, Luke. We do. We do. Yeah. But Snooks is doing awesome. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> I just don't feel like we're going to have the same arguments anymore. Oh, you're going to miss your arguments. I will. Oh. Oh, come on, mate. You and I have had some doozies. I'm sure we can get that on. We can, we can yeah, start yeah. talking about so, Holden Ford again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Patrick and out I on that note. <laughs> have had a very long time to argue about that, and we still haven't. This is one of the few things that we definitely don't agree on, but have never <laughs> argued within the last... Oh, it's almost 20 years, dude. Jesus, Jesus. It's getting close. It's getting very close. It's not quite 20 years, but it's getting close. It's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for thanks for Kaz for dropping in and saying good day. Thanks for Skrill. He uh, put up a quick note that he couldn't actually listen this week. He was stuck at work. So thanks to those guys for, for checking in in the uh, the live chat. If you're listening and you're still getting through, thank you again for everyone. This has been episode 229. See you next time. <laughs> See you. I've been Snooze. Oh, I've been Rebecca. And, and I have been Greggio. Toodles. Peace. Bye. Well, here we are once again at the end of this week's show. If you're still hungry for more video game content, then head over to the Aussie Gamers Express Facebook page and give us a like. We also have a heavy presence over on Twitter and YouTube, and their links are waiting for you in the podcast description. This podcast is available for your convenience through Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and more. Thanks again for listening. Catch you all on the next episode of the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. Somebody put me back in the fridge.